Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a wonderful, brilliant day. So I've already recorded this with my microphone, I put it into the computer, there's no sound. <laughs> so that, that was three days ago and I cried about it a bit because it was like a concise video. I felt like I talked about the books in such a good way and I was like, I'm going to quit YouTube now, I don't want any of this shit anymore. Uh, but here I am doing the wrap up. Like, what can I say? Yeah, so today is April's wrap up. I've already talked about these books. If my like engagement about these is uh, not as high, you know why. But on that note, I've been like very negative on my channel lately, complaining about going negative, losing subscribers, not getting as much views. And I'm here to say, Thank you to every single one of you that comments. I love reading your comments. It's like my favorite part of my day when like all of you are so lovely, the ones of you who watch my videos and I'm grateful for every single one of you and we'll start with the, the comics that I read during April and I will obviously link all of the timestamps down below and today we're going by genre or category and we'll start with graphic novels and comics and the first two are the Adventure Time comics so I didn't read an Adventure Time comic in January, February, March so I read it in the beginning of April and then the end of April. This is the last volume that is, this is volume 8 and it's the last one written by Ryan North and then this one is by Christopher Hastings so they're switching authors between this one. I gave this one two stars, it did not make an impression on me and like I was trying to figure out what this one was about and I just like do not remember and then when I flip through it I'm like yes this book was chaotic as fuck and like it didn't even make sense to me um and then I get my hands on this one I paid a ridiculous price for this one because I, like I've said in the past they just stopped like it's illegal like illegal <laughs> to buy the Adventure Time comics outside the US or sell I guess but still that's crazy so three stars it was just uh, meh don't really have a lot of thoughts on them so let's move on. Then I also read two new uh, comics by a new favorite author. These are super short, queer, sapphic graphic novels. So I first found this one, That Full Moon Feeling by Ashley Robin Franklin. Um, just picked it up randomly at the comic book store. And it's about these two girls who go on a date and they meet through a dating app and you follow like their three dates. It's super cute. I made a whole like five queer comics inspired by this one just because I... I loved it so much for what it is and I gave it five stars, but then I went back to the comic book store, browsed again, and I found that she has another book. And oh my god, this one? It's a bit shorter and this one doesn't have like any color. And I'm always hesitant when graphic novels don't have color. It's like a bit of a turnoff for me, but this was just amazing like that other one is really cute but this one's scary as fuck it's so creepy and it's like about these two girls who live in the suburbs of texas and their relationship is quite rocky but then something changes and it magically gets better and then like you get the reason for why it gets better it's so creepy i don't get it it's like speculative and weird and queer and like i loved it this is five stars but this is like five plus plus stars Okay, and then the last graphic novel I read was Hap Haven by Norm Harper and Louise Joyce. Louis Joyce follows this girl who her father was very into superstitions, basically. Like, if you see a black cat walk over the street, it's bad luck. Going under a ladder is bad luck. A uh, rabbit's foot is a good luck. So what happens is that she gets in a fight with her mom. Her dad is dead, and she gets a fight with her mom. She deliberately steps on a crack because it's supposed to break your mother's back but it actually happens when she does that and her mom mother lands in a coma and so this leprechaun shows up and whisks her away to the land of Hap Haven where like all these superstitions are created and she has to go and look for a rabbit's foot to like save her mother give her luck I guess so she could recover the story is a bit convoluted like there's a lot of plot going on and I find that in graphic novels like they're generally more accessible and more enjoyable when the plot is a little bit less um, complicated. Like everything makes sense and it's clear like while you read it, but just generally I enjoy uh, plots that are not so... I feel like I have something between my teeth. You know how I feel like when you're like a tomato peel is like stuck kind of in the gums? That's what it feels like. It's gone. Okay. It was slime. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so gross. <laughs> But the art style is also like not my absolute favorite. It is quite grim and 
uh, has dark undertones and I'm more of like a colorful person but I gave it three stars I have nothing against this it just didn't make like a huge impression on me then let's go briefly over the four books that I read in my drag reading blog I'll also link that down below and in that video you can see the time steps and when I go into depth in all of these but just a quick wrap up the black flamingo YA about Michael who grows up as a queer boy and how he starts drag in his persona as the Black Flamingo. My favorite parts were like the story of how his name, the Black Flamingo, comes up and the ending where he talks like beautifully about what drag means to him and being black and queer are definitely my favorite parts. The audiobook is fantastic and uh, read by Dean Ada and it is written in verse and it does have some different formatting in the book but I haven't read it physically but this was like a 3.75 stars, definitely worth a read, really happy I read it. Then Guru, this is RuPaul's guru book where he gives you loads of advice. It's a bit preachy but I enjoyed it for what it is. Then we have Trixie and Katya's Guide to Modern Womanhood. Um, these two drag queens decided they wanted to write a book and it's complete shit. I did enjoy it and it's like a fast read, but like it's just so dumb. I didn't like the message, I don't know what they're going for, like it's a whole lot of confusing bullshit and they just did not what they were, know what they were doing with this, like they're obviously not writers. <laughs> like what can you say about this book? It's silly, it's dumb, I don't recommend it. I even like these drag queens, I love these two people and I didn't like it. It's just a bit of a mess to be honest. But like it is also funny at points. Then I picked up Drag, The Complete Story by Simon Doonan. So this is like a complete story of how drag became what it is today. And it's organized by different categories of drag or like different drag styles. And they do kind of blend together at certain points obviously. But it's just really interesting hearing the history of how these drag styles were develop the different ways you can do drag, how political drag is, and how much impact drag and trans people have had through history. Um, I really liked it. It is a 4, like 0.5 stars. There definitely could have been, I think, more personality in a way. Like, I wish Simon would have inserted himself more into the story, if that makes sense. But it's just, like, a lot of information. I will not remember all these names, but I really enjoyed it, and I recommend it if you want to know more about drag. Then let's talk about the nonfiction I read in this month. Obviously, some of the drag books are also nonfiction, but this is other things. And here we have So You Want to Talk About Race by Ijoma Ulu. This was fantastic. Like, I read a few books about race and racism, but this is definitely my favorite so far because it is so practical and it's so helpful. I think in the beginning, the author definitely talks uh, about things that are like, to me, a little bit obvious. Uh, going into the book but I think it's like if you have one book about race like you have to start at some point but this was just such such good book talking about like how to actively be an ally or anti-racist or how like you can actively dismantle these beliefs and it was just really practical in that way like I feel like some books that talk about social justice issues say things that need to change or why this is wrong but this one's really like you can do this and you can start now and here's how to do it and here's how to talk about it and I found that really really helpful and Ijoma also had some really great advice or reflections on like how to be a good activist in general and she also talks about model minorities, cultural appropriation, all these different things and explains and I think in a really good clear way why it's bad and what's effective and not effective when it comes to being an activist or uh, anti-racist and all that. So I really like this book and I think a lot of the wisdom she has you can apply it to whatever whatever field you want to uh, be an activist in or stand up for different social justice issues. Like this was just very proactive and I loved it and I gave it five stars. I listened to the audiobook of this but I went back and read certain parts and it's really good. The way I picked up What's the Tea by Juno Dawson. So I pre-ordered it but because of the stupid fucking Brexit it took it, it took it ages to get here so I have like a in my mind, I have a special relationship with Juno Dawson. She doesn't know it, but we have a special relationship. <laughs> you know, certain people or like public figures, you just feel really connected to. And Juno Dawson is one of those figures for me. I read her book, Say Her Name. I think it's the first ever book I read before I started booktube, like the last book of December before I started booktube. And that book just made like a huge impact on me. And 
every time I read her books, it makes me feel really at home and really safe. I love her voice, like, in the way she narrates things, but maybe I should talk about this book now. I don't know. What do you think? So this is kind of like the book, This Book is Gay, but she wrote that when she didn't know she was trans. Um, and this is kind of like after that, so there's definitely, like, differences between these two books because that one was written in like 2013 and this one was written um, last year. So here Juno Dawson writes about everything that has to do with trans and transness. It is marketed towards teens, but she writes in a super, super accessible way. And I think pe like kids as young as 10 years old can read it, adults can read it. I definitely got a, a lot from this, but I just really needed this to like feel the gender euphoria. I adored it. What more can I say? It does obviously have like a UK centric, uh, perspective but I love it and what I love about Juno Dawson is that she is so funny like she is so funny like she writes about facts she educates you but you sure will be entertained along the way and this book has like illustrations and diagrams and whatnot and I really recommend it I felt very seen I loved it and I love Juno Dawson okay and then I read How to Do Nothing Resisting the Attention Economy, Economy by Jenny O'Dell. So I listened to this as an audiobook as well. Yeah, like I said in my last vlog, this changed my life. I have definitely like shifted perspective on my relationship to my life and how I should be living throughout this book, which is like a crazy statement to make, I know. This book is actually not about how to do nothing. It's actually about resisting the attention economy. And I just, I feel like when people explain this book, they talk about like how, you know, like don't spend so much time on social media, like go into nature. This book is so much more than that. Like this book blew my mind in some way, many, in so many ways. And it definitely has, uh, for me, a little bit more of an academic voice and perspective. And what, take that with a grain of salt because I didn't graduate high school, okay? I'm a high school dropout. So when I say academic, uh, you know, don't really trust me on that. But she does back it up with like good research and she makes connection between dots that were really interesting and insightful. And some quotes were just like beyond brilliant. And I don't think I can explain this book in words where it's gonna like reach across to you because I'm just not that intelligent. But I honestly think that every single person on this planet needs to read this book like this is a must read and the audiobook is fantastic so just get to it already it is amazing then finally we're gonna get into the fiction books that i read this month and i mean it's really just three books <laughs> i'd like comment down below how you would describe my reading taste but because I am so confused like something also about the attention economy that I think is really interesting is like how we like to categorize ourselves and like for me I apply that to like aesthetics and like branding how we like to explain things and put things in boxes so we can talk about it and understand it but like life is just not like that and I feel like the fact that I can't and no one can explain explain my reading taste is like a good thing you know because like how how can you because I'm such a complex human baby this is Moon of the Cross of Snow by Wabgishi Grice. This was the book club, club pick for the Climate Fiction Book Club, and I will link the live show that I had together with Sim and Sage down below. I also link the Instagram, so go and check it out, stay updated. Next month, we're reading Parable of the Sower, which is quite a famous book, and if you haven't read it, you better hop on to that, and we'll be having the live show at Sage's channel, and that's all irrelevant, but I just wanted to let you know. It's kind of like a post-apocalyptic thriller. It takes place in this Anishinaabe community in, during winter and what happens is that the power goes out, the phone line goes out, and for a while they don't really know what's going on and they kind of have to make do with what they have. It's not directly like a claim climate fiction but there's definitely some very interesting reflections on indigenous practices and communities. I talked about this book so well in my per first version of this wrap up. Um, mm. I gave it three stars. I enjoyed it, but like it wasn't really a favorite in any way. I definitely enjoyed the conversations and the information I learned about indigenous wisdom and communities and the reflections around like who will fare the best when societal collapse happens, which is the worst case scenario for climate change. And I think there's a lot to learn from this. And it was a great discussion we had and a I really enjoyed that more than I enjoyed the book. It was something. Okay, 
Um, here we have The Twilight Zone by Nona Fernandez. So maybe you know her from Space Invaders. I think it's her other famous translative book to English. So this is a Chilean author. I haven't read or lit read. I haven't seen watched The Twilight Zone, but like I know of the concept, but I didn't when I bought this book. I just saw it and I'm like, that looks like something I will enjoy. It kind of blurs the lines between real life and reality, which is something I think is the purpose, hence The Twilight Zone. It is based on the true door story of, it is 1984 uh, during the Pinochet re regime in dictatorship regime in uh, Chile, and a man comes into this mag, pub mag published a man walks into a magazine publisher and basically tells his story of how he tortured people under, you know, the Pinochet dictatorship. So interesting. And in this book, it's kind of like this main character, which also sort of seems like the author. And she's doing a documentary on this man and of this time in Chile. And she imagines like all these perspectives of the humans who were tortured and the ones that did the torturing. And she depicts them in this very human way. And our main character kind of also asserts herself or inserts herself into the plot. So like she's hanging out with the man who tortured people. And it's really interesting and it's almost like too clever for me because I definitely think there's parts and dots that I could have connected if, for example, I read this a little bit quicker than I did. But it does have the written narration style of some of the also popular books that have been going around. For example, No One Is Talking About This and Weather by Jenny Offill, uh, where it's written in paragraphs and it's not always flowing but I learned a lot about Chilean history, which was my favorite part. It's a bit magical and it kind of blurs those lines, but the reflections and the way it's written, I think is very intelligent and I gave it four stars. And if that sounds like something for you, like a little bit speculative, informational, interesting, like I recommend this. This was different and I like books that are different. And then lastly, I read First Person Singular by Haruki Murakami. This is his newest short story collection. So in this you have eight short stories and they're kind of, I believe, but don't take my word for this, uh, all written from the perspective of Haruki Murakami himself. And it kind of only becomes apparent in the last couple of stories. So some of these I really enjoyed. Most of them have something to do with music, but then Murakami, you know what you did? You decided to write a story about a man explaining how he thought this woman was very ugly but he somehow found her attractive because she was so confident and the story ended with them being good friends and how he really admired her and like despite the fact that he was ugly she was ugly he find her attractive but he would definitely not have sex with her and like boy am i tired so so fucking tired of reading about women from the perspective of men i do not want to read about women through the male gaze or even trans people through the cis het male gaze or like just maybe I should just not read books from cis het male gaze at all um this story was just so bad even though the other stories are maybe like three and four stars none of them were really five stars for me but this one story oh my god oh Murakami sometimes you spew out these like sexist, horrible, stereotypical things. And the worst part, I think I think he knows what he's doing. It does have some like self-reflections in the last story, I think, where he reflects on how he knows his views are not progressive. But I gave it two stars. Like, it wasn't bad. It's just annoyed me so much I couldn't anymore. So that is it for this wrap up. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, even though I'm not in the best mood. It's fine. It's fine. We're all good. Comment down below a little robot if you made it to the end of this video a robot emoji i hope you have a lo lovely amazing day filled with love i send you all so much love um be kind to yourself take care of your loved ones i wish you all an amazing start of may bye